Hello everybody, so today we're going to be learning about intermediate accounting, recognition, and measurement concepts. Constraints. In providing information with the qualitative characteristics that make it useful, companies must consider two overriding factors that limit or constrain the reporting. These constra constraints are the cost-benefit relationship and materiality. We also review two other less dominant yet important constraints that are part of the reporting environment. The first one is industry practices and conservatism. Okay, let's talk about the cost-benefit relationship. Too often, users assume that information is free, but preparers and providers of accounting information know that it is not. Therefore, companies must consider the cost-benefit relationship. They must weigh the cost of providing the information against the benefits that can be derived from using it. Standard-setting bodies and governmental agencies use the cost-benefit analysis before making final their informational requirements in order to justify requiring a particular measurement or disclosure the benefits perceived to be derived from it must exceed the causes perceived to be associated with it. A corporate executive made the following remark to the FASB about a proposed standard. In all my years in the financial arena, I've never seen such an absolutely ridiculous proposal to dignify these actuarial estimates by recording them as assets and liabilities would be virtually unthinkable except for the fact that the FASB has done equally stupid things in the, fa in the past. Use common sense just this once. Although extreme, this remark indicates the frustration expressed by members of the business community about standard setting and whether the benefits of a given standard exceed the cost. The difficulty in cost-benefit analysis is that the causes and especially the benefits are not always evident or measurable. The causes are of several kinds, costs of collecting and processing, of disseminating, of auditing, of potential litigation, of disclosure to competitors, and of analysis and interpretation. Benefits to preparers may include great... Hello everybody, so today we're going to be learning about intermediate accounting, recognition, and measurement concepts. Constraints. In providing information with the qualitative characteristics that make it useful, companies must consider two overriding factors that limit or constrain the reporting. These constraints are the cost-benefit relationship and materiality. We also review two other less dominant yet important constraints that are part of the reporting environment. The first one is industry practices and conservatism. Okay, let's talk about the cost-benefit relationship. Too often, users assume that information is free but preparers and providers of accounting information know that it is not. Therefore, companies must consider the cost-benefit relationship. They must weigh the cost of providing the information against the benefits that can be derived from using it. Standard-setting bodies and governmental agencies use the cost-benefit analysis before making final their informational requirements in order to justify requiring a particular measurement or disclosure, the benefits perceived to be derived from it must exceed the causes perceived to be associated with it. A corporate executive made the following remark to the FASB about a proposed standard. In all my years, in the financial arena, I've never seen such an absolutely ridiculous proposal to dignify these actuarial estimates by recording them as assets and liabilities would be virtually unthinkable except for the fact that the FASB 
has done equally stupid things in the in the past. Use common sense just this once. Although extreme, this remark indicates the frustration expressed by members of the business community about standard setting and whether the benefits of a given standard exceed the cost. The difficulty in cost-benefit analysis is that the causes and especially the benefits are not always evident or measurable. The causes are of several kinds, costs of collecting and processing, of disseminating, of auditing, of potential litigation, of disclosure to competitors, and of analysis and interpretation. Benefits to preparers may include greater management control and access to capital at a lower cost. Users may receive better information for allocation of resources, tax assessment, and rate regulation. As noted earlier, benefits are generally more difficult to quantify than are causes. So let's uh, let me talk a little bit about the reality in accounting world. So about tax assessment or auditing, it does make a difference in the time range because auditors or tax officers from the government would ask the company for their financial data for examination purpose or auditing purpose. A quick information for those who don't know about auditing process, a company will always hire auditors to do assessment process for their financial reporting or for their financial situation. Auditors will provide reliable and accurate opinion regarding company's economic stability or financial reporting. Auditors' opinion will give a big impact for a company's business, especially when they are looking for investors. Investors will check their audit report to be able to see if a company's future will give them financial benefits. This is why it is imperative for auditors to do an examination or assessment or auditing like recalculating or reviewing or observing all the financial data of a company. Speaking of reality, accountants are always busy at the end of the month or at the beginning of a month. Why they are busy? They are busy because they work on the deadline to submit monthly financial reporting and around Two times in a year, auditors will come to the office, they will work there and ask for documents or information so that they can proceed the auditing procedure. It will always be a super hectic time for all accountants during that time. Can you imagine the time management for all accountants when they are busy preparing the final, re the final reporting and at the same time, they are being asked to help auditors to provide information. It's like a multitasking job. This is, this is why sometimes accountants ask for more time to finish their monthly reporting. So that's a little bit description about the real situation in a company. Okay, so let's continue the audiobook for intermediate accounting, especially for the cost-benefit relationship. The recent implementation of the provisions of the Sarbanes Oxley Act of 2002 illustrates the challenges in assessing costs and benefits of standards. One study estimated the increased costs of complying with the new internal control standards related to the financial reporting process to be an average of 7.8 million US dollar per company. However, the study concluded that quantifying the benefits of improved, more reliable financial reporting is not fully possible. Despite the difficulty in assessing the causes and benefits of its standards, the FASB attempts to determine that each proposed standards will fill a significant need that the costs imposed to meet the standard are justified in relation to overall benefits of the resulting information. In addition, the board seeks input on causes and benefits as part of its due process.
Okay, so I will continue the topic about constraints to the next video. Please keep on watching the next video and then see you again very soon. Thank you.